Ang Huling El Bimbo was a major hit online after it released on YouTube, gaining 5 million views. Unfortunately, it had to be up for only 48 hours. While you may never catch it again and experience the story, hopefully this video will fill you in on the most important parts of the story and all the different interpretations I came up with. And yes, this video will have spoilers but not with the first part of this video. While I mainly talk about Filipino movies, I think theater is very different in many ways. But we can all agree that the most similar thing between the two is storytelling, and Ang Huling El Bimbo is no exception. The song of the same name itself tells a bleak tale of a lost friendship or romance that was never revisited. Because the natural progression of high school or college relationships are that sometimes you lose these connections, and then you grow old, get a job, have some kids, or date tons of people, and you kind of forget. Then one day you just hear the news that the person you used to care about has passed away. The song is about regrets and looking back and realizing what could have been could also be interpreted as turning a blind eye to something that matters to you. Bringing it back to the play, it deals with similar things, especially about being blind and being in denial. It also goes through a lot more societal issues, quite a lot for a two and a half hour experience to be frank. It explores issues such as family expectations for a gay person, the rich and poor divide, male privilege, and so on. The thing is, they only go through these very briefly. Personally, I would prefer that they tackle less issues because this leads to false expectations and premature conclusions if you skim through these in a story. For example, I really like this gay character in the story and I really wanted to see how he would resolve his issue with his parents. But they kind of resolve this part without much in between. You don't really watch a story for the conclusion, you watch it for the in between part. And only then are you invested in the end. Without this, the parts like these felt lacking. The touch I did like was when Joyce's aunt lectures her about being a modest female and that you shouldn't date guys especially at that age, otherwise you're a very flirty girl. The story didn't frame it in a way where you should listen to the aunt or tita. It kind of served as a cautionary tale about putting your expectations on a young woman and how harmful this can be and in the long run this ends up being useless anyway. And honestly, I hope more films or shows take this angle in telling their stories and not just run through it briefly. We don't need any more Vincent Tement scrap and we're probably gonna do a video on Vincentiments, so stay tuned and subscribe. Uh, I'm watching. Go ahead and click it. I think the heart of the story revolves around the idea of ignorance. Our three main male characters are different types of ignorant. One is a liar who failed to keep his promises, afraid because he probably can't keep it. Another is a person who tried to live up to society's expectations of him, but let go of his happiness in exchange. And finally, we have someone who is in denial of things that are wrong in the world he lives in. Even if that thing be something that is right in front of his eyes. If you observe closely, you may see that these three guys are a byproduct of pressures of the society they live in. You may also see this as people coping with guilt and how guilt changes people in different ways. Often, not the best of ways. But that's what's great about this story. Depending on the person, they may see it one way or another. Some people don't even like the characters or the story as a whole, and that's understandable. The film has more plot holes that need patching, especially involving our three main characters, Hector, Eman, and Andre. Now we get into spoiler territory. So for those who haven't seen the play and doesn't mind spoilers, I'll explain the story. We have our three main lead characters, Hector, Eman, and Andre, ready to set off for college, bright-eyed and ready to take on any challenge. Soon enough, they become doormates and best of friends. Now, they weren't very explicit with what university they went to, but I'm pretty sure it's UP Dinaman because of fraternity and activism the, the characters briefly talk about. Later on, they meet Joy, a very energetic young lady. The three boys develop a deep bond with her over the course of their college years. 
She even gets into a relationship with Hector. One night, the four of them go on a late night road trip adventure, skipping grad practice in the process. They talk about their dreams and aspirations, and Joy is like, you're gonna be a successful politician and you're gonna be rich, and she's like, I'm gonna manage my titas, cut in their yak. Later on, they start vibing, playing some music with Hector playing the guitar. Suddenly, their party gets crashed. A group of evil men assault them and unfortunately for Joy, she gets raped while Hector and the boys have guns pointed at their faces as Joy desperately screams for help. Now, Hector and the others don't really know how to respond. And this gets to the part where most people are divided on. They don't really understand why the boys just left Joy, who is their longtime friend, in such a helpless situation. And only after rewatching the scene again did I finally understand it. Basically, they skipped graduation practice. And if they were to be found out what they were doing at the time, they couldn't graduate. At least they would be deferred from graduating until they attend the actual grad practice the following semester. Hector and the other boys didn't want to risk that. It would reflect badly on them to their parents who have obviously high expectations. So they don't seek out justice. And if you think about it, this part really draws an image of society where you can't necessarily do the right thing because you have to give up something. Whether it be money, fame, friendships, or familial ties. It's easy to run your mouth on Twitter when you don't have anything to give up. Trust me, I'm not throwing shade. I'm part of this equation too. It's easy to be an activist rallying with your buddies in your prestigious university when there's no risk. It's easy to be a successful filmmaker like Hector, lauded and praised in film festivals for making LGBT poverty films when there's no risk. But when the subject matter of his creations are presented to him, he hides because he'll help only if it doesn't affect him. Finally, the boys graduate. Joy greets them all with a smile. And with that, with a smile is actually the song playing in this scene. So yeah details. Anyway, I didn't expect how well used with a smile is in this scene. I have always heard the song in a positive and uplifting tone, but used in this scene, it sort of feels like a smile is used to deny guilt and or hide your scars. There really is no bittersweet in this scene. It's just really sad as this is also the last time the four of them all saw each other before growing up and going their own ways. Honestly, I think this is the best part of the whole show and I wish they didn't have the 5 minute intermission before this scene because it kind of dulled our senses to this somewhat climactic moment. Afterwards, this is the part where it gets really dark. Joy gets PTSD flashbacks. The story builds up this very oppressive atmosphere. Toyang's canteen gets taken over by some men. It turns into some KTV resto bar of some sort. And of course, the business becomes successful because obviously, sex and debauchery sells. Now, it gets to the part where Joy finally sells herself to prostitution. You can see the stark contrast between where life took joy and where it took the other three guys. Hector, Eman, and Andre all went off and got successful careers. Careers that they aspired to ever since they were young college kids. Meanwhile, Joy gets into a lifestyle she never thought she would get into because having control over your life, having the know-how to be successful, having the right mind in order to work a certain job, it's all because of privilege. Poor people just go where life takes them and Joy is a good example of that. Many years later, Joy has a young daughter named Ligaya. She tries to get in touch with her old friends, Hector and the rest of the dudes. Now, these obviously very successful men don't really have time to meet with lower class women and her child. They barely know her anymore. But to Joy, these guys were a reminder of a time when she was happy. Because everything went downhill, basically, since these guys left her life. They were the only people she had a genuine connection outside of her family. She thinks if these guys made her happy, they would do the same for Ligaya. Unfortunately, it came to the point when Joy died because of a hit and run quote-unquote accident. And this is how Ligaya gets to meet the three men. 
after they promise to take care of Ligaya, we finally break into the song Ang Huling El Bimbo, where the characters reminisce of a time once forgotten with their dear friend Joy. <laughs> <laughs> 